This lesson is all on what I consider the animal agriculture process or how we actually manage our animals depending upon which species we're managing. So if you're actually looking at animal agriculture, really it's animal agriculture as a whole is the process of producing and caring for animals and that really is going to vary depending on the type of animal you're raising, like what species, um, the location where you are, what facilities you have access to, and your overall producer goals. There really has been an increase in consumer demand for locally grown and organically raised products. Um, the public is now educating themselves more on agriculture and the, ag and the agriculture process and how that impacts them. So why there's been this increase in consumer demand? They have increased their awareness of how agriculture products are raised and manufactured. Um, this includes livestock as well as plant crops. The majority of livestock and poultry products are still produced and sold to commercial corporations who then redistribute them through various outlets like grocery stores, um, packing plants, that sort of thing. So different decisions that producers have to make. First of all, they have to decide what their goal of production is and what their purpose of the animals is. So for cattle, for example, you can either have dairy cattle or you can have meat cattle. Same thing with goats. You could have meat goats, you can have dairy goats, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, they also have to decide what type of breeding system they want to use. Um, and that's really based on how they elect to produce the animals. And they also have to decide how to market those animals. We're going to go straight into beef cattle. So beef cattle producers can specialize in one type of cattle operation. We're going to talk about the different types here in just a minute. Or they can combine the various types. So the first type we're going to talk about is um, a cow-calf producer. And a cow-calf producer is where they keep a herd of cows and they're bred every year to produce calves. Um, the calves are then sold sometime after weaning, which is typically six months to, to a year old is when they're getting sold. The next type of operation we're going to talk about is seed stock operations. So seed stock operations are purebred breeders that are really focused on improving the genetics within a given breed. So they could specialize in Angus cattle, they could specialize in Herefords, um, whatever, but they're they're basically trying to keep a herd of purebred breeding animals. They're, re they're providing replacement bulls for their cow-calf operations, um, and they're really looking to improve the genetics of whatever breed they're specializing in. So stalkers and feedlots. Um, stalker operations purchase calves from cow-calf producers and then they care for them for about five months, um, five to six months-ish. Um, so they're going to care for them for anywhere from until they're a year old to about 17 months old. And then feedlots, feedlots is the picture that I have on the slide. It's where there's large amounts of animals that are raised in a more confined area. Um, so they're fed up to a market weight or a finished weight and then they're sent off to be processed somewhere between 18 to 22 months of age. Um, feedlots can purchase their animals from stalkers or from cow-calf operations, um, either one of those, through one of the different livestock markets. Livestock markets will be covered in a completely different video. So this is what a very large feedlot operation looks like. So feedlots typically are going to raise grain-fed beef cattle. Um, they're not going to be on as much pasture. So your feedlots are then going to sell the animals to packing plants, more commonly known as slaughterhouses. Um, most packing facilities are going to then process the animals into what are called primal cuts and then subprimal cuts. Then the producers, or the products, I'm sorry, are sold to retailers and food service companies. So your places like your grocery stores, your butcher shops, those, those sorts of places. Um, some packing facilities will sell subprimals to meat processors who create what we call value-added products. Um, and these are things like your pre-cooked items, your sandwich meats, that sort of thing. Really the amount of time involved in producing beef cattle is significantly longer when you look at swine and poultry. Um, poultry, for example, broilers are only in the system for about six weeks. Um, swine are much shorter. You know, beef cattle takes a year and a half, two years to process an animal. 
Um, most beef cattle are grown independently, so they're not grown on a contract. And we're going to talk about contracts when we talk about marketing. This diagram just kind of shows you the process through which the animal goes through once they're ready to be sold. Dairy cattle will be covered in the next video.